Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Heidi with us and Nicole from Channel 27. Now, the great thing about today, folks, is not only are we going to get deep into the eastern side of astrology on people's star charts, but also the western side of astrology, and we're going to do some tarot readings as well. Now, I've never owned a tarot deck until about a week ago. I told you guys my little mind trip that I had on H.R. Giger and some of the cool paintings and photos that he puts together. Just really weird art. And I ended up ordering a tarot set of his of 23 cards. And I'm actually going to pull a card today as well, just in the, the light of fun, I guess. You could say, when in Rome, be a Roman. We're going to have some fun here. And you guys know my agnostic approach towards things. I, I definitely like to seek the truth, but I certainly don't know what it is. And I'm not bound to any religious preferences. So this is going to be very interesting to find out what comes from today. Now, as you guys heard earlier, Heidi and I talking about the concerns that I have with the inauguration, not only because of these mass protests that's going on, but also I want to bring to your attention, ladies and gentlemen, that the, uh, the cameras, the body cams of security and police in D.C. during the inauguration are going to be shut off. They're saying from above the top brass are saying you're not allowed to have your cameras on. And I find that very, very odd. Now, the official story is ACLU is defending the rights of the protesters because they don't want people like cops video cameraing them while they're breaking the law doing protests because it might be used against them. So they're just looking out for the little people. But in reality, I see things a lot different, a lot more sinister. But that's a whole other podcast. We'll get into that later. It's great to have you both on the show with us here at The Leak Project. How's it going? It's going good. Yes, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Really appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited. Last time we had Heidi on the show. I mean, you blew some minds, Heidi, with the charts that you did, not only on Trump, but other people. And what I've gotten to know so far from you, Nicole, I mean, you are very astute and just the, the knowledge base that you have towards what some might consider esoteric or occult, just because it's hidden knowledge. I often consider it science that's just not as known about because you know, people have a different label on it. So this is going to be great. Looking forward to it. But let's jump into first, we've got a whole bunch of people's charts that we're going to read that have actually sent in their birth date, where they were born, the time they were born. We're going to get into that here shortly. But the first thing we're going to talk about is inauguration day into detail here. So not only what we're going to see on the Eastern side with the charts, but also we're going to pull some cards and then you guys can decide what the, the symbolism is based on these tarot cards. So Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Uh, we'll start with you, Heidi. And we, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, but let's get into some more details on what you're seeing with Inauguration Day, please. Um, are we going to share screens? Yeah, and we're going to share screens right now as well. So, All right. So this is, um, I was just going to kind of look at Donald Trump's transits again, like I did from the, the previous video. And um, then look, this is the, the inauguration actual chart, but I did the Mir Harta. It's, a, it's called Time. In Vedic astrology to see like what how it was transiting on his on his planets. So his transits right now. I did this is the exact day. And I, don't, I know you don't want to really get into this too much, Nicole, but he's got Rahu in the first, right? K2 mm -hmm. in the seventh. And yes, I mean Rahu and K2 in the first and seventh are dangerous in your first and seventh house anyway, is a transit. So that's my main concern. But right on that day, right, his dasha, what he's, Mars is going into right at the eighth house. What's that eighth house? Death, transformation. It's also death and rebirth. So it might not always be, you know, it's change, powerful change. It can be disgrace. It can be um, all those things. Um, but Mars in his D60 chart, which is his end all tell all chart, he had um, noticed he had something that kind of concerned me a little bit. Do you ever use this, Nicole? No, I actually haven't gotten into that screen at all. So Mars is in the 12th house. It's in Pisces. It's in Revati and, or, and it's in Purva Bhattapadra. It's just, it's an overall energy of, I just personally think he's going to have hidden enemies. And I just, well, we know that he has enemies and he has hidden enemies. And I don't know what the screen's doing right now, but. Um, <laughs> it's the Hillary camp. They, they're trying to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just will say. I, don't, I mean, he's got Mars in the 8th and he's D60. Mm -hmm. And Mars is in the 12th in this. That's my concern. But I'm, I'm hoping that he's protected because he has Jupiter and he's the nakshatras that are protecting him are in good ones. So I do think it's going to hopefully be okay. But this, I mean, this is just at this time. So if you, if you want to look at the inauguration and how the year is going to be, which what I intend on doing with another, a different astrologer, bring him on. He's more into, he does a lot of politics too, did a lot of Trump. Um, articles and stuff 
we were going to do the inauguration day and kind of give an overall prediction of the, how the year was going to be, because it's going to be based on what time. So, you know, cause if there are riots and there are people going a little crazy, then it might change and it might um, change the way the whole chart goes of the year. So, you know, that's, I don't know what the screen is doing. But. Well, the D60 is the fastest changing most variable chart. So it's refreshing for all the incremental changes that are happening as time passes. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, that's what I think it's doing at least. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> this is the chart that you'd use to see the differences in like twins, for instance, that are born on the same minute, but a different second. Yeah. And also, you can see like, if you wanted to start a business or something on a day, um, and you wanted to know if it was a good day, good nakshatra, then it, we would use this. So but yes. we're having some technical difficulties. So we might just have to can this. So really what this software is, is it's so up to date, it's constantly refreshing to keep the, the person that's actually keeping track of the software using it. Or if you're doing a reading for somebody, you can tell that person essentially what their day is going to be like based upon the, the information this is compiled. Correct. That's what I believe. Yeah, I haven't ever used this screen, but that's what I would think since the D60 does change all the time. Um, what does D60 yeah. mean exactly? So the D stands for the word divisional. So if you just take a look, like Heidi, if you could like point to one of the squares here, that represents a sign. Um, and each one of these signs can be divided. Well, each one of these signs represents an area of life. Um, and then each of these signs can be divided into smaller and smaller pieces. So let's say, for instance, we're talking about um, the ninth house, which would represent, one thing it could represent is marriage. Well, if we divide that into nine sections, um, or each sign into nine sections, I mean, I'm not even describing this right, we would get the Navamsha, which is the ninth divisional chart. So really, without going into detail and making myself sound stupid, it's just basically zooming deeper and deeper into the chart based off of a numerolo numerological number that relates to a certain quality. So nine relates to marriage, for instance. So the D60 resonates with the number 60 which would resonate with um, a specific, specific things. It's actually, the D60 is typically used to show almost like the final results of all the different divisional charts. So I know I'm not describing that perfectly. No, you said that's really good. And, but the, okay. the only thing is if you don't, this app will change every thir like 30 seconds. So if you yep. know exactly what your, your time is to the seconds, then, you know, so you really can't use it. That's the point. Cause who knows if the doctor, there were some comments that they posted on the YouTube that I did previously, like what happens if, you know, you're in the ER in the delivery room, and the doctor doesn't do your time right. So, which is completely true. I mean, it's true. Exact time. And then there's a question even of if the clock is accurate, like in the eighties or the seventies, <laughs> you have a little clock moving. Right. Right. So I don't think we're going to, I think we just pull cards because we're, I don't really know what I think is going to happen. I'm just hoping and praying that everything goes smooth and safe. And he is, um, going to do a great job. Now, what, what are you seeing with these charts, Nicole? So I haven't spent any time looking at these charts and I just, as a disclaimer, I stay out of the, I stay out of any political discussion that has to do with astrology or tarot or any of that. I will be drawing a card, but, um, so I'll refrain from making any comment on that chart, but I will say if anyone wants to do a little deeper research on this chart, um, maybe Heidi and I can share what the moon's nakshatra is on that day, because oftentimes that the moon's nakshatra will show you which activities are auspicious on that day. Um, and then a person can kind of figure out, well, is inauguration going to be supported or not supported by that moon's nakshatra, which, you know, is something to take into consideration. It's in Swati. So Swati is a it's uh, Swati is like the wind. It's fast moving. It's all over the place. Um, Heidi knows a lot about Swati Nakshatra. It's a blade of grass. It's a blade of grass. It's um, the, it's a great business person. So it makes complete sense. It's uh, you know it's a business person that has a business person mentality that fluctuates and kind of can be a great entrepreneur because and a great leader and a great mm -hmm. CEO. They have phenomenal, but they don't like really. Um, Swati doesn't really like rules well, but. Um, I will say because it wants to be free, but you changeable. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a nice nakshatra for business, for, you know, CEOs and leaders and people that start businesses. Um, so I, I personally think it's a good one. And, but I mean, I don't know if you can even use, I mean, we're just learning, we're learning. So, and we've been learning for four years and we still can't Yeah. do an inauguration chart is almost just like, 
you know. Well, let me make an analogy with Swati that just came to mind that I think is kind of fascinating. So if you think about before a storm rolls in, right? So it gets super, so say it's just normal temperature outside, right? And then maybe if it's, it's even a little cool outside. And right before a storm, it gets extremely hot and humid. So one day it's just kind of cold and then maybe five hours later or the next day it gets super hot and humid and it gets super windy. All of a sudden there's all this wind. Well, without even a meteorologist telling you what's going on, if you're familiar with how air currents work, you would know a storm is coming, right? So I always think of wind as being something that brings in change, right? Because whenever a big storm is coming or something of significance, even atmospherically, we get wind. So I think it's kind of an interesting nakshatra. Like, I think it's fascinating that that is the nakshatra of the day of inauguration because it will bring in something. And what does a storm do? It can create immense change. Like, think about what happens after a tornado, right? right. And sometimes it's a positive change because what if the earth is like completely parched and then a storm comes and it refreshes and nourishes the earth? So we know something's coming, but without, without like me looking at this or anything. One of the <laughs> things, Lati is ruled by Rahu. <clears throat> so Rahu is pretty chaotic. Yep. So it's going to be a chaotic day, in, in my opinion. It's just going to be, I just think it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough day. And that's all I really feel good saying because it's kind of, it's just one of those charts that Mars is in that the, um, part of Pisces that isn't like the nice brevity friendly Pisces. It, I mean, it's in a, it's a spiritual one, but it also can be the part of Pisces, you know, that like the, if somebody doesn't have a good nakshatra that's like that, it can go a little south. So just leave it at that. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Stay tuned. More to come. We'll see what's going to happen here in a couple of days. And certainly time will tell. And I'm going to stay optimistic on this. I just find it very interesting with all this predictive programming in the media you know, White House down, uh, designated survivor, and then you read about these, these murals that are painted in LA of 60 different people's blood. They put together 20 pints of blood and paint an anti-Trump mural and all this kind of stuff. And, and once again, I'm certainly not on any political train by any means, but what I do see is an opportunity here where th this might be that fresh start. And what you just said, the way that you use that wind analogy, I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going to stay optimistic on that. And we'll, we'll leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Come back on the 20th and we'll keep you updated. And definitely check out Channel 27 on YouTube. Now, let's turn off the screen here and let's pull some cards and let's see what people's Let's see what comes to people's minds. This is going to be interesting. This will be kind of an experiment, ladies and gentlemen, because what we're going to do right now is we're each going to pull a card from a tarot deck. And you guys, once again, I've never owned a tarot deck until about a week ago. And I did this. I bought this deck also to kind of do like a podcast and show you guys how just wild some of H.R. Giger's artwork is. It's just so far out. But anyway, we're all going to pull a card here. We'll see what pulls up. And I'm going to quit hey, sharing the screen here. Can I say so. a good thing about Nicole's tarot readings? She is probably... So another thing when you do charts, you know, you have to have somebody that has a good tarot, like if you want a good tarot reading, they have to have that. And Nicole is a phenomenal tarot card reader. She's done many for me on like the day of something happening. And I swear they have always happened to the T. I've never met somebody that has got it spot on so, so well, so good. So cool. All I'm right. I'm going to put you on speed dial, Nicole. You're, you're, <laughs> you're on my best friends list now. That's awesome. You and all, right. all my friends. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> so, so how do we turn off the screen here then? I think if you could stop sharing it on your end, because I tried to do it and it wasn't let me. And then what we'll do is we'll pull some cards here. And uh, all right. So I'm actually going to just be, as you guys can see here, I'm just kind of shuffling these up. I don't know what I'm getting here. So I'm just going to keep shuffling them. Is that how you shuffling do it? Them. I just have really big cards. So I have like, I have to really shuffle. <laughs> yeah. It's like one at a time here. No, 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 no. All right. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> Still going. So, and as I'm doing this, ladies and gentlemen, I am focusing on what is going to happen inauguration day. What is going to happen inauguration day? What is going to happen? What is going to happen? Okay. I think, I think I can fill the card. I think I can fill the card. Wow. What'd I already you drew mine. <laughs> wow. Looks like a the Ace it's of Cups. Up. It's upright. Yes. Ace and I think, I mean, I'm not going to say anything, but remember we were talking about the storm and it could have been a tornado. Here, this is water right yeah yeah which means so, emotionally it's maga maga there's an m in it maga huh <laughs> maga nakshatra is his, is trump's ascendant nakshatra the ace card fascinating so, meditate on all of that 
That's a positive it's, one. This is positive. It's all about new beginnings. So I would really meditate on all the symbolism, the dove, this, which actually kind of is an alchemical um, symbol. Yeah. There's a lot. Of, I mean, it's not just alchemical. It's like a thousand different things. But, but it's funny. It is wind right there on the side. <laughs> yeah. The ace of cups. It. I think I'm not going to pull a card. Go ahead. No, you pull no, the you card. Are. Your turn, Heidi. Your turn. You have to. I'll do it last. Justice. Put it all the way forward. What, what is it? Justice. I like this one. And it was upright. Oh, my goodness. The justice card. <laughs> it's pretty the incredible. The justice card, ladies and gentlemen. That looks like him, too, a little bit, if he had long hair. Oh, yeah. And the red, yeah. like association with his chart yeah good uh, Woo, i'm feeling good about this that is fascinating okay all right so i i can i think i sense the card that i'm gonna pull right here this is it is this it oh yeah. no 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 that's not it this is it this is the card no all right here we go no 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 all right what, what does it say um the oh the wheel of fortune the wheel of fortune card <laughs> in a very Where? transhuman dark archaic yeah. Very interesting way. Okay, so the Will of Fortune card. Fascinating. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, whatever that means in your mind, the Will of Fortune card. So we've got the, the Ace of Cups. We've got the Justice the justice card and the Will of Fortune. This is an incredible power pack. And then certainly what you just showed us, this is fascinating. All right, so enough about that. We've, we've had our fun and, and hopefully things will go well Inauguration Day and change will be for the better. Now we're going to get into some of the charts that have been Put together by these two from people that have listened to Leak Project and they sent in their birth data and I'll let you guys take over. So what do we got? What's the first one we're going to be looking at? So, so God, do you want to tell our plan just so you can explain it, Nicole, just when I get, I'm getting this up? Yeah, I can. And just for the people that sent in the birth times, we will, we should say the birth date and the time. Obviously your identity will be concealed, but just so that you know, we're talking about you. So that'll be fun. Um, and what we're going to be doing is I primarily study uh, Vedic astrology, but using the tropical zodiac, although I have studied with the sidereal zodiac, um, and Heidi studies Vedic astrology using the sidereal zodiac, but today we're going to just be looking at your charts together using the sidereal zodiac, and we, we are just going to point out some interesting things with each chart, and actually it's so interesting because there are, you know, what I always say, say to people is that well, birds of a feather flock together. So whether we're congregating at like a club or even a restaurant or like a real, um, I'm like, I'm talking about like a dance club, but even like a book club too. We usually are congregating and drawn towards like-minded people. And even though we shared that one similarity, we likely share other similarities. So I found it fascinating when we looked at some of these charts that I did see a lot of similarities, even in this small group of people that submitted um, their birth dates. Cause I know there are a lot more viewers. So we are going to point out some of those similarities as well, just because I found them so fascinating. And if any of you guys get a chance to cast your Vedic astrology chart, you can look for this stuff to see, you know, maybe what is drawing you towards the leak project and conspiracy theories and interesting occult subjects. So I think we're going to cover all of that kind of stuff. Um, talking about the ascendant and the nakshatras and I, I might be forgetting something, Heidi. Yeah, so we think to, the, to make it the most effective, because in order to study a Vedic astrology chart and actually give a reading, it takes us about two hours at minimum just to go over certain things. And honestly, it's not doing justice to just, just start rambling stuff off. So we thought it would be the best to give you our, your ascendant and talk, talk to you about your ascendant. And we're going to talk to you about your ascendant um, nakshatra, and we're going to talk to you about where Rahu and Ketu sit, so you're kind of like your karmic house, so where you'll see probably a lot of transformation, a lot of change, a lot of ups and downs, and some, um, we're also gonna talk about maybe some, maybe it's key points if something sticks out to us, like that is, you know, feels like we should share with you, but um, we're gonna keep it pretty brief, because in order, to, in order to have a reading, you need to be on the phone with us too, because, well, for me, like I, I do, when I do readings for people, I ask them, I, I say, I write down a lot of stuff, <clears throat> and I'll ask them questions, and as, as like I'm reading them and talking to them and reading the planets, the charts can go different ways. And I just, it, it helps to have somebody on the phone. So, yeah. you know, because a planet means a million different things. So if it, you know, aspects and there's just so many things that um, it really makes the most sense to just do it this way. So this particular, you know, I guess I'll just start. Is that good? Can you see it, Nicole? Yes. But can you actually do the split North and South Indian? Because I have an easier time seeing some things with the North Indian. 
So go one over to screens and then it says like north south screen. Yeah, just go back to screens right down down. So that should be helpful and then maybe put the dignities or something down there and the characters. So this um this individual, it's a female, we do do that. You know, I would have to say that she, she is this is an Aquarius ascendant. So Aquariuses tend to be very eclectic, um dif different and not in a bad way, just they are definitely um unique and they see things their way and um but they really do like they're very um like they're the people that might dye their hair different colors and be you know get tattoos and stuff just to express their creativity um also it's in the nakshatra of purva bada padra and that is so these i'm just gonna write down some of my notes that i wrote but very charming sweet definitely this person i have to say i think in my opinion could possibly be into music um i wrote very sociable kind of like the party people um very kind and generous they get more god-fearing with age um they can be very materialistic great writer and a great speaker um and it could be like music writing or something of that sort it's just because it's writing doesn't mean it has to be you know but this is like in in my opinion like the entertainment entertainment chart that's how i kind of looked at this what about you nicole what do you say about the ascendant with aquarius i always think of aquarius as being extremely rebellious um more rebellious than other signs and the thing is that they are searching to individualize themselves from the group but they are so humanitarian like they do care about others but they're trying to search for their own identity within the group so sometimes i think that can get like it can get kind of crazy because like you said they'll either be like super rebellious with how they look but also aquarius ascendant is sometimes the most likely to um like get addicted to things or you know have other kinds of vices i guess is the right word right and to be honest with you and there there's some stuff in this chart that would concern me and this is like if we just I'll say that fifth things. house that fifth house has some stuff rahu mars sun and mercury all in the fifth house mm -hmm. fifth house is uh children it's past life karma it can be um actually rape or something like that it can be um entertainment. because and let's just explain why, because the fifth house is, it can be like that, um, that romance. Like the seventh house is like sex, but fifth is like romance. Mm -hmm. So that can also be um, good luck, um, emotions. It can be psychologists, musicians, astrologers come out of the fifth house. If you have a strong fifth house, you know, there's a great chance you're gonna be an astrologer or interested in astrology. Um, anything using creativity. It's like the, the create house of create creativity. So whatever mm -hmm. you're creating, it doesn't necessarily have to be it's creating kids, creating music, creating, you know, astrology charts, whatever it may be. <laughs> but, uh, it's, I will say there's with all that chaos in there, I would guarantee you, in my opinion, that there were some struggles with the father for sure. Maybe if there's an older brother, which I think there might be, cause there's K2 in the 11th house and it can be older siblings. And even siblings, because the third Lord is Mars and Mars is in there too. Mm -hmm. um, or it can be, you know, just could be, it could be anything with that. There's, if, it just can be a lot of chaos. So there's a troublesome house right there. So whether this person doesn't maybe ends up, I actually did a chart recently and had Rahu Mars together and the woman had 10 kids, but sometimes they don't have kids, they adopt kids, you know, it just depends. So you have to really get into that, you know, a lot of different ways. Um, but I will say too, her, this 10th house is uh, Jupiter's in Scorpio. Jupiter does well in Scorpio. Um, so, you know, anything in the Scorpionic house that would be a career like, I would say. So um, I wrote a good blog. I also wrote a good blogger music. Um, very communicative, but radical, and you don't want to conform to the norms of society. Um, oh, we were going to talk about the moon nakshatra. Yeah, so the moon is in Ashlesha. And then what else did I notice? Let's see. Okay, so the moon is in Ashlesha, and then you also have Saturn in the ninth house. And I did want to point out the ninth house and kind of feature the ninth house because the ninth house is kind of important in a lot of these charts that we're getting. And it's especially important in this chart because Saturn rules Aquarius, which is the ascendant of this chart. And that Lord of the entire chart is going into the ninth house. So I'll give you some of the things I think the ninth house uh, means, and then Heidi can kind of chime in and share her thoughts on that. But for me, the ninth house means like your higher belief system, your philosophy. It's actually like your higher intelligence, whereas the third house is your lower intelligence. So your third house is like kind of what you learn in school. It's that reading and writing and communication. 
Um, but then ninth house is like higher wisdom, your intuitive wisdom. It can be like your religion that you were brought into. It can be um, travels to foreign lands or the wisdom you've learned from your guru or your father. And this woman's, and this woman's ascendant Lord goes right into that house. Um, so do you want to add on to, um, yeah, so there's, you know, whether, which we'd have to really take a look at it to know this, but you know, whether it, she may, might've had, um, very strict upbringing where it was like really a lot of rules and regulations, or it could have been, um, you know, not, she rebelled because I've seen it where people rebel against that and they just kind of go crazy because, and they're just, especially with these certain extractors that are very like spiritual religion, mm -hmm. really going to kind of work for that person and they're going to be seeking other things. And, you know, another thing, Aslesha, her this moon nakshatra, yep. this person, the way this person thinks is very goal-oriented. So they're going to think with, with like, just how do I get achieve this, whatever they want. And in my opinion, there's a big draw towards fame and like partners that are famous or partners that are high up in status because there's Venus in the seventh. That's my opinion. Or maybe, you know, it, that's what I think. Um, but that Aslesha has that hard time feeling like, oh, okay. So it wants goals and it connects with people. It wants connection and it's going to connect and she's going to like connect with somebody and then get what she needs out of that and then kind of moves on to the next. So it's like, it's yeah. like an unfulfilling moon nakshatra, but you know, it, it's, they, that's, that's just like, it's a very goal oriented. So she, whatever she wants, she can get. This person has a chart that could become famous. So, I mean, I would say, cause Rahu in the fifth, just like it can destroy the house. It can also makes like a wind a windfall and a massive amount of fame so right depends. yeah and what i was going to say about that moon in Ashlesha is i feel like the moon is your mind it's how you perceive things right it's what you take in and she's got that you know she has saturn there in that ninth house of her higher wisdom and philosophy so something kind of restricted so and likely with the aquarius ascendant she probably would rebel but then Ashlesha is actually this next chakra that's like all about cunning and trickery and stuff like that so i feel like there's some kind of confusion or there's there is some kind of rebelliousness and trying to figure out the right way to do things like this person would have to be very careful to make sure that they behave in an appropriate manner and you know aren't being deceitful so there's there is something about the value system that is coming up in this um i'm not articulating it perfectly but ashlesha is it can be like kind of deceitful in a way and yeah, but it is in moon in cancer is good. So moon is in its own house and that's in this woman's house of health. So actually having a strong sixth Lord in its own house is good for the health. So I do want this woman to know that, right? Yeah. I think this is a woman. I don't know. Maybe it's not, but oh, also the couple things that just to bring the little Vedic philosophy into it. Um, I, I don't know how I wrote this down, but I kind of write notes as I like read charts, but I wrote the star of the winged horse. Um, it's honors and success after the storm. So it can be um, later life success. So possibly it's the later one is part of the nakshatra. And right. also can, I don't know why I wrote unicorns down. So maybe you liked unicorns as a child. Oh, it's like the one horned, like it's, I can't remember the name of it, but it's like the goat God. It's oh, like yeah. a weird Eka Padi or something. Right. So I wrote, this is, a, this is also all about trans, transformation um, with a sacrifice for a higher cause to change the world. So this person probably does really want to help and heal the world, but um, it can have a dark side because it can keep secrets of the feelings of how they really feel about the world. So it can be a little turbulent, I would say. This could be a turbulent chart, but definitely has potential for fame and happiness. And, you know, if you surround yourself with the right people, the right groups, because K2 and the 11th is going to kind of give you some shitty friends and shitty network circles. So maybe even addictive <laughs> people that scream over addictions are just not the right people. So you got to be like us and start screening everybody. <laughs> yeah. Also, you brought up a really good point. So this is a recurring theme. So I think it would probably be pretty accurate for this person that the moon is in the sixth house. So the mind is going to spend a lot of time in sixth house matters. So that means like they would have to deal with competition and conflict. And like you were saying before, conflict with the mother, we were talking about that at some point. Yeah. Um, but the, so what happens when that happens, when the moon is in the sixth, is that the person gets so used to dealing with conflict that they can usually, like, they could be like a great lawyer or really great at helping people deal with conflict because their mind mm -hmm. has had to deal with it. Like, that's part of their life. So, so this would give, like I was saying, it's good for the health in this particular chart because it's in a good sign. 
it would also be good for the mind. And so despite there being that kind of difficult fifth house, there'd be some kind of resilience there. And like Heidi was saying, a uh, possibility to use, um, use that resilience in a way to help other people. And I, okay. Just, I was going to give a quick little transit, but I'm sure sh this person has been just having a rough, this can be just a rough, it's an Aquarius. Is K2 an Aquarius? Is this on the right setting right now, Nicole? That, um, um, I like that's oh, right. I think so. I'm trying to think of what it would be tropically. I'll look oh, on mine. Right. That's totally right. It's tropical. Yeah. Right. It, I was getting confused because Leo, I was did somebody earlier that was Leo. But I thought, I thought that that stellium was actually in Pisces right now. So that seems weird. No, it's in, um, well, it's in Aquarius tropical or Vedic way. But so I'll say this person is probably right. leading themselves right now a lot and just kind of retracting and trying to figure themselves out. So it's a rough, it's kind of a shaky thing, but they also could meet somebody. Rahu's right on the Venus here. So this could be a phenomenal, you could meet somebody um, that it could be a serious relationship if that's, if you're not married, but it also could end a marriage too. So it's kind of a weird transit because I've looked at this in mind and anytime Rahu has been transiting or the one time it transited my seventh house, it brought a Rahu like relationship into my life. Mm -hmm. So it was, it's either filled with fantasy or like a foreigner or, you know, very obsessive and passionate. Yeah. And then also Saturn's going to get, be getting out of your 10th. So you'll probably feel a little bit less, you know, turbulent with career. Cause anytime Saturn's there, it's just going to give you a little setback. It's going to give you a couple of hurdles. And, you know, so it's been, it's been kind of, I'd say a little rough. It's not been the easiest time for career, but you probably can make some, you've made some great strides and, you know, you're trying to figure everything out with K2 in the first, but that's, that's about all we can say with just looking at the transits. Cause I kind of just did that randomly. And we <laughs> said we were going to do that. <laughs> all right. So next. Or Rex, do you have any questions? No, I'm just actually enjoying what you guys are saying. I'm doing my best to put it all together because I just don't know the details as much as you both do. I know you've been studying it a lot more than I have. So essentially, though, I mean, you did a good job breaking down some of their better opportunities in life and things that they should try and avoid. And I did notice that one thing when you brought up all of the different planets in that one house. That's one thing I do know to look for now after I had the first interview with Heidi where she said, oh, yeah, by the way, a surgeon and a serial killer. What's the difference? <laughs> One usually gets paid more than the other. That's the difference. <laughs> In the star charts, that is. Yeah, you blew my mind with some of those charts, Heidi. But yeah, well, let's get into the next chart now. This is fantastic. Real quick, there's a phenomenal woman. Her name's Eve, who's a Vedic astrologer. She's such a, she's a gem. Like, she's so great at these nakshatras. They're her gift. And mm -hmm. um, she did a YouTube today, and she did a class, apparently. And she gave murderers, she gave the charts of murderers and saints to tell, to see if they could figure them out. How funny is that, Nicole? Just that. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I like her. I like her nakshatra videos she made with um, Dr. Arjun Pai. Yeah, I like. They're her. really good. So now this is um, this is a Scorpio ascendant. So just like me, I'm very familiar with this. this yes. Is, um, <laughs> I, this is a powerful chart. So whoever this person is, this is eleven twenty one sixty one. I don't. Mm -hmm. know. This is this is a good one. Um, this person I would say is uh, very intelligent. CEO type of status, possibly uh, very confident. They walk with pride. Scorpios um, are kind of shy, actually. But then, if there's Mars and Sun in there, that's like different ballgame. They're going to be not like that. So, um, Scorpio, it's in Jesta, and Jesta is um, standing up for something that you really believe that's true. And so, it's for fighting for a change. Um, it's digging deep. It's like a warrior. So this person could have definitely been in the military, could have been, um, and can be an engineer, could be law enforcement, could be a politician, could have a father that's a politician or a father that's famous. This person could be a professional athlete. I mean, it's kind of, this, this is a, um, pretty powerful. Um, I wrote uh, fighting for social change. And so there, this person's willing to go out into the war and just fight for, to help whatever cause he feels like is the cause. This is a male. So um, and maybe does business or does something with other countries because Mercury and Venus are in the 12th. Um, mm -hmm. I also wrote soldiers, athletes, arms dealers. You have friends with higher status, uh, sons of politicians, celebrities. I said that, uh, this person is very fiery, very bold. And up until 40, I guarantee you, you know, there were some, it can be a short fuse and a, like when you're mad, it's like you get pissed and then short fuse type of thing. Um, but it's in your Mars, which is your, this, this strong force is in Honorata and Honorata is all about being somebody's friend. And it's all, it's a very softer side of Scorpio and Honorata mm -hmm. is about kind of figuring out, um, 
what's going on in somebody's head and being their friend because you want to help them. And so it's very psychological. This person's probably a really good de detective. Just like, so this person could be like a government profiler or something. Um, get, big time, I would say. Um, but there are difficulties. So it's with friendships. So they've been burned. Scorpios get burned all the time. Relationships, all that stuff. It's a very turbulent sign. Um, but it's, they're not usually surprised. You know, and Mars and Sun in the first, even though there's some chaos in this chart with, I think, siblings, third house. Um, particularly maybe younger siblings or communicate. There's something, there's some turbulent structure or maybe this person, um, there's some turbulence with communication. I don't know, but long story short, the willpower that this individual has is like through the roof. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, the, the, all the strong planets, that's, God, what do you have to say? <laughs> you covered so much of it. I was going to point out that fiery ascendant because you have, Scorpio, yeah, well, you have Mars in its own sign. I know Scorpio is in a fire sign, but still, like, that's such a fiery planet right there with the sun. Mm -hmm. um, so that's huge. And Anuradha, yeah, Anuradha is really good for military. Um, and there's a compassionate nature to Anuradha as well, that understanding of friendship. Um, other things I could point out is, again, I wanted to point out the third house ninth house axis this is appearing again very strongly so all of you watching if you can cast a chart with sidereal calculations you will probably find you have a lot of planets in the ninth house or a lot of planets in the third house and at least one planet or something happening in that ninth house because in this individual they have k2 which represents um like past life or something you're really good at naturally and that is in the third house of like intellectual thought. Like I said, it's like reading and writing. It's what you can take in with your mind and intellectualize. And then what this person is developing in this lifetime is Rahu in the ninth house, which we were kind of saying before is higher philosophy, intuition, this higher wisdom, not the lower wisdom, but the higher wisdom. So I feel like a lot of people that are drawn to kind of discovering a, the truth or a truth that they think exists will have something in the ninth house and with Rahu there, they are willing to kind of like overthrow um, sort of what's happening. I actually took a few notes to just to see if I forgot anything. But people with Rahu in the ninth house, sometimes they will adopt a new culture or religion. So Heidi pointed out the 12th house. This person has Mercury and Venus there. When those two are conjunct, they show a place where we have a great interest. So we'll probably spend a lot of time on whatever house they're in. So probably interested in different cultures or into spirituality because that's what the 12th house can mean or jails <laughs> anything with the 12th already, house. i think this person could be an attorney too have some sort of law degree contract something of that sort that is also ninth house's law so um sometimes with rahu in the ninth house a person will want to create their own religion or their own set of rules so i think people interested in conspiracy theories or interested in different philosophies they really are trying to create something that works for them um, yeah, they're going to have trouble with, trouble with their siblings no matter what because K2 is in the third. And people with a strong ninth house, they really want to understand themselves. And so by, you know, just by extension of that, they're going to want to understand the world. So pay attention to that. I think that's very strong in this chart um, oh, as so well. well something maybe with the, it could be with the father and authority. Figure. So like this is another chart though. This is somebody that could have been in jail. Like if, like if you looked at this. So this person could have gone to jail too. And right. Like, because of the fighting or something. I mean, who knows? But I'm not saying that that's happened. But just so you know, that is a possibility without digging too deep into it. But that just shows you how much this person could be this or it can be that, you know? So, yep. That's, and that's, that's when a deeper analysis would be helpful, right? Yes. <laughs> Which is why, like, I was telling Heidi before, and sorry if I'm interrupting you, sometimes I can't hear you. Um, but, like, I'll spend a week looking at a chart. So to do these kinds of quick things is very difficult for me as I'm still learning. I'm not an expert, I should say. But we both just love doing this. And we're willing to share what we know <laughs> with the world. Um, sometimes, okay. now let me jump in real quick too, Nicole. Sometimes that, in my opinion, is better than somebody that just does charts. And when you have a passion for something, or if you start doing something and then you get so good at it, you love it, and then you find out you can make a, a living doing that. And that's great too, because, you know, obviously people that are the best at things, they start doing it just as a hobby and then they, they find a way to magically do it and be able to pay their bills too. And then they're usually better at that because of that reason, because it's a passion of theirs. So I appreciate that about both of you is your passion. And, you know, when we had Heidi on before, 
she was able to put some just really good details down. She did my charts and was able to explain things about me that I was like, wow, have you tapped my phone or something? You know, it was, it was yeah, cool. she's insane. <laughs> and the fact that you both kind of put this together now, I mean, this is the first time that I've had a chance to speak with you, Nicole, but I really appreciate the way that you harmonize and both of you together, I mean, it's kind of like an unstoppable force here because you can kind of pick up on things that maybe one of you didn't see. Oh, yeah, that makes sense and add to that. So you guys are really, really hitting home on a lot of things. But what I'm picking up here is on these people's charts, it's like it's one of two. It could be light or dark. So there's that polar opposite in this bipolar world that we tend to live in. It seems like it really just depends on who that is as a person. They have the choice to make one of those decisions. So it's not like everything is set in stone, but there's paths and things in place where people can make certain decisions, correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I will tell you, if people are trying to seek the truth via the leak project, they're probably trying to harmonize and gain control over these planetary energies that Heidi and I are picking up on as being difficult. Because when people are searching for truth they're like i said they're searching for themselves and so i think that if you know any of these people that have sent their information to you are likely on that journey so maybe they have had a rough past or things that have happened to them but in general if someone's trying to improve their life with knowledge are probably not currently a criminal <laughs> right right and you know who knows yeah. though and i have talked to then this is where i i think astrology can help people so much because you know you can be honest and it is what it is. It's the truth. It's, and when you tell somebody something that totally didn't believe astrology and you say, they're like, how the hell did she know that? You know, which is what happened with me. Your skeletons come out and you're like, Oh God, what else do they know? You know, but, and when you, when you learn this and the best, the beauty of this is your each planet has these nakshatras that really like they can be really good. And just because they're in a chaotic house doesn't mean that like you're going to, you might learn something from a big mistake, and your soul though is really pure and you just were with the wrong people, the wrong place, the wrong time, you know, and you learn that you have other gifts. I mean, this is like, this is like your DNA in a way. It's things that you think of that, you know, maybe that per first person isn't a musician, but maybe she should try. Like, who knows? I mean, cause she's got a, some powerful things there. So don't give up on that if that's what you want to do. Just like, you know, that's, and that's in my opinion, if this person, this person just should, I'm, what I think is just help as many people as they can, like, because Scorpios need to help people. Right. Scorpios need to transform people. Honorata is being a good friend. So this is like somebody that's going to naturally have intend to do that. The sun and Mar Mars can be a little bit um, more powerful, but this could be somebody that fought in the army, that was in the army military, you know, doing all that stuff as well. So for, it's just, it's, it's so interesting and not having them on the phone is kind of hard. But that's yeah. You know what's going to be neat about this, uh, and sorry to interrupt, is it's going to be fun to see what these people say in the comments section that <laughs> left their birth dates. Because obviously we're not giving their names, but you're saying, okay, this is the birth date. They're going to listen to this and they say, oh, wow, that's me. Holy cow. They're going to say, you know, this person is way off base. Or this person is spot on. This is crazy. And it's probably going to be the latter. So I'm pretty excited to see what people have to say. And I know that we have several people's charts and stuff that we are going to read. So how many more did we want to do tonight? And are we still working on this one? No, we go to the next one. Yeah, we can do a couple more. We should do the one that um, Rex was saying was super important, the one that was in Panama. Yeah, let's do this. We'll start. Let's do this one, that one woman that we kind of remember. We couldn't yep. We'll do oh. one in Panama. And while you pull that up, I just wanted to point out a feature that this second chart we looked at also had moon in the sixth. So someone that has dealt with a lot of conflict, maybe even with her mother, and for that reason is really good at dealing with conflict. And I mean, there's a million things that Moon in the Six can mean, but I'm just pointing out some things that maybe you guys want to look for that we kind of saw pop up. Now, this chart I like a lot. This is definitely somebody that is, in my opinion, so this is a Cancer Ascendant. Um, this is January 30th, 1971. Is that the right year? Is that right? Um, I think so. I can check. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, so this cancers are very um, hard on the exterior, but soft and sweet deep down inside. Um, they love their homes. They love their homeland. They love their mothers. Whether they're, they're turbulent or not, um, they can still, you know, have that bond with them and be great mothers, motherly. They're just very motherly. Um, and they're very, they get their feelings hurt easily. So they're very, very sensitive, even if they don't act like it. Actually, they can be kind of like pistols. Um, my sister has double, like double cancer and she doesn't really say much, but remember there's been times when I've said something to her and she's been like, ah, and, you know, really <laughs> and didn't talk to me for <laughs> a long time. And, um, but this person is in Pusha Nikshatra. It's the star of nourishment. So mm -hmm. that's like, I think this person could be an advisor, um, a, a 
like a psychological teacher, a philosophy teacher into philosophy because they are um, all about ingesting knowledge. Um, they're third eye masters, healers type of Kundalini energy. Um, they're under, able to understand ancient texts and um, they're selfless. It's an auspicious nakshatra. And um, God, what do you have to say about the Cancer Ascendant? Um, so with Cancer Ascendant, one of the things I find the most interesting, and let me just verify. Sorry, I'm looking at the chart the different ways. So sometimes I get screwed up. But um, I always think it's interesting for Cancer Ascendants that, yeah, they're very emotional. Okay, but the moon is actually the planet, one of the planets that can bring great fame. So even though the Cancer is like emotional and sensitive, the Cancer still wants to be super popular. Like the moon moves through the sky very fast. So it's making a lot of planetary connections. So it is kind of about socializing as well. So um, could want to be popular, could want to be social. And another thing about Cancer Ascendant, which I've seen in people's charts that I've read, is that um, sometimes their relationships, they can have relationship problems. And the reason why is because Saturn rules their seventh house and their eighth house. So it's ruling their house of partnership, but also their um, house of great transformation, death, disgrace. And also Saturn is an old planet or it's called like the old planet or symbolizes aging, I should say. So um, sometimes they can have older spouses or a delayed marriage. And yeah, we can talk about her. Can, um, sometimes I've noticed cancer struggle having kids. And they struggle having kids. Interesting. So yeah, yes. That. So I wonder if I'm trying to think of that aspect. Would Saturn be aspecting the fifth house then? I don't know, whatever. I'll look from here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. And here, so here's what I've, that what I think this person's moon nakshatra is in, um, Uttarabhadra, oh, I can't say it right. Uttara <laughs> So well, you can't Saturn. see that. <laughs> yeah, Saturn, right. This moon nakshatra is in Pisces and it's in very spiritual, another Kundalini type of energy. I mean, it's, this person is definitely, um, in my opinion, a healer. Um, whether they be a, I wrote on here just some notes about to be a teacher, stockbroker, somebody that's in finance or speculation, could be somebody that has some gambling problems, um, could be like a history teacher, or this could be a nurse. Um, it could be um, diving, oh, so another thing, maybe even a family counselor or family like psychotherapist or whatever, helping people with addictions because of the fifth fifth house connection with the eighth, well, the eighth house, 10th house. So that's just digging deep psychology of things to the 10th house of career. And that's in Barini. And it's Barini is the nakshatra of healing, bearing, helping, nurse, nur, nurturing. Um, you want to step in on some of that because that's your moon nakshatra? Um, wait, where are you seeing Barani? Barani is her 10th house Saturn. Okay. Well, Barani, yeah, I didn't look that, that much into it for her, but Barani is um, symbolized by symbolized by the god of death, but it's also symbolized by like the female reproductive um, system. And so um, <laughs> I know I'm not saying that right, because I think it's actually like just the ovaries or it's just one piece of it. But it's actually about like the um, pain or like the process of bearing to be able to like bring something into fruition. So oftentimes like there's like a struggle to actually birth something. Mm -hmm. But it's birth because it's death. So you, in order to be born, you have to die, right? So Barani is not a very easy nakshatra, I would say. But it can make somebody... Um, I've seen Barani a lot with musicians' charts, um, with people that are really into the mystical sciences. And I've seen it as well in a lot of... And I mean, in addition to that, just astrologers have Barani mm -hmm. quite a bit as well. So yeah, I should say more about it because it's my own nakshatra. But I've, I actually have had to like think about it a lot because it's my own nakshatra. So I don't have enough um, detachment from it to like yeah. totally see it for what it is. But I do notice in my own life that creative process is incredibly difficult and like almost painful. So if this person is creative, which um, yeah. is possible, then. And I think this know. person also could do something with that, um, helping children, fighting for children, fighting for a cause for children, fighting to stick up for children, for the, be an attorney or like a, that's that their mother's been battered like an abusive family type of thing or that's what they want to do and that's they would be very great at that if any type of helping with all those gifts um this could health and medical field life coach um just using your knowledge to dissect something because it's 
your Venus in the sixth house, it's Nyola, and it's dissecting um, the psychology of people and how they think with Mercury. And there's just mm-hmm. this big, so I think possibly if you're not a psychologist, you should be one. I'm sure you, a lot of people tell you their problems too. Yeah, that Mercury and Venus there, like I was saying before, that just shows a huge area of, of interest. Mm-hmm. So dealing with people's problems, you know, yeah. or even health, um, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to bring out another feature of this chart, actually, too. So we have moon in the ninth. So that becomes really important. Um, just like that other chart, the ascendant lord in the ninth is what's going on in this chart. So this person, their mind and the, their entire being, because moon rules their entire being, is going to be highly interested in ninth house subjects. And to repeat what I was saying before, that's higher philosophy, that's seeking the truth. However, this person could have some difficulties within that, just because Uttara Bhadrapada can sometimes mask our intuition by our own emotions. And this is a cancer ascendant. So just, you know, be aware of like what's coming in and what's truth and what's actually just you emotionally maybe getting attached or not being able to see it yeah. for what it is. And also K2 in the second and Rahu in the eighth, that's definitely some turbulence be to, be, with finances, whether this person could have won, hit the lottery or could, had a, some rough financial times, you know, depending on particular time frames. But it, you really don't care about money as much and it, your money kind of fluctuates. But there's definitely a financing finance thing going on with that. That could be an inheritance too. So, Yeah, or related to the spouse because son in the seventh can give you like a powerful spouse, at least more powerful than you, according to how you feel. And we have Shravana and Danishta, which actually bring great wealth. So like maybe, or and or fame. So like maybe there's something about status and money related with um, the yeah. spouse. I don't know if Heidi agrees. And I, I'm just pulling oh, stuff yeah. randomly. Like, That's good. Say that. Yeah. That makes me think more too. And yeah, I think for sure. I think that could even be something with the, fa- with the father. Yeah. And this isn't definitive. Like this isn't how I read charts. I literally spend two weeks pouring over a chart and I have spreadsheets, but this is fun. <laughs> and it's good to like review stuff and try to get you guys to think about, um, think about things and how even if you don't know anything about astrology, how all this stuff connects, you know, like the moon is your mind and it's your mother. So think about how your psychology is shaped by your mother raising you, stuff like that. It's fun to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and jump to the next chart if we can then. And so you put in literally a week or longer sometime in these charts that you do, Nicole. Yes, I do. And I am, it's because I'm kind of in full-time student mode. So I'm spending the majority of my time studying. So when I read charts, I'm like making sure I'm integrating everything I'm learning and um, being as thorough as I can, because I'm still like learning all these different new techniques. And it's just also how my mind works. Like if you would have a conversation with Heidi about how, like how she perceives astrology and how I perceive it, I'm like so much more academic, which doesn't mean I'm more intelligent or anything. It's just like, I'm so detail oriented. Like I'll read books, whereas Heidi will soak in information in a very Jupiterian, like hearing sort of way. Like she can watch videos and listen, whereas I have to write things down and like calculate things in order for me to really integrate knowledge. Yeah. Mine's all patterns too. So like I've read so many charts just for my own good, just to see how everybody is. Like I said in the last YouTube. So mine's more just repetition and I've learned everybody's charts just to see who I keep out of my life and not. (laughs) Who's like, who to do business with? Because these are things that, you know, are very important. You can, there's certain people that aren't going to work well with certain people in a business partnership, um, for sure. And that's, Mm -hmm. this is powerful stuff that you don't even know about that you could avoid some mishaps in your life. You know, just, it's a nice tool. Yeah. Nicole, I'm more of like, I'd say a person that I don't like to do, oh, this is going to have, I like to pick out somebody's core soul, see what they, their potentials are. And they can bring them because they're, you know, right. sit here and say like, oh, we, we know this and we know this time. We don't. And we know we could be, but there's no, the minute an astrologer does start doing that, you know, it's, um, it can be like a curse in, in my opinion. I just think it can be, I just like trying to bring the positive out, whether somebody has been, show them some light a little bit from, because there's a lot of darkness. And yeah. I've noticed with this set of chart, this charts that I've done recently, it's been a lot of, it's been different, different people, different patterns, because a lot of people that are in astrology and they get their charts done are people that are in astrology. So they're already kind of like, they're already in, they've already found themselves and, you know, they're yeah. studying it and the people that I know in Vedic astrology, but this is more of, you know, just 
this is different because this is people that are looking at a conspiracy channel yeah. about Trump. You know, they hate yeah. him or love him. So it's going to be, you know, it's been a different crowd. But I mean, that's how I found you, Rex, and why I was on your show. So I'm the same way, you know, investigators. Yeah. This is a bunch of investigators. And I will say I like admire Heidi's way of reading so much. And I feel like I could really benefit from integrating her approach into my approach. And like, that's kind of, yeah, it's been so nice to be able to work with her and learn from her too, just by talking about astrology all the time. So I feel like we balance each other. We do, because when there's a technical question and somebody's like, what is this going to happen to this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. But I still go ask Nicole. I'm like, can we take a look at this? Do you think it could be this? this and this just i mean because she has she's more books i'm more into tuition and let's see some patterns and i'm going to talk to the person and understand so then i'm going to be able to read their chart better so some astrologers will just send you a video which is fine but me personally when i do people's charts i have to talk to them that's just me but like more of a counselor person i guess <gasps> that's good that you both work well together and you jive that way and one of the things about leak project though is it's certainly a lot more than just conspiracy theories we get into critical thinking we get into attempted humor i attempt to do humor <laughs> Like I said, it's temporary, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, but you know, we talk about stuff that's serious too. Like I'll break down scientific data on certain white papers and vaccine charts and, and we'll look at the graphs and put things together for people to decide for themselves. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of woo woo and other things as well. It's definitely entertainment. You can put any label you want on it. And certainly I appreciate the more scientific aspect of things. When you do look at some of these charts, I appreciate this over going and picking up a nice meal at a Chinese restaurant and then getting a couple fortune cookies that you open up and it says that tomorrow you have to use the number seven or no, let's pick up some different numbers, four, eight, 15, 16, 23, 42. The famous numbers from the series Lost, if you guys have ever watched that. But anyway, another show. <laughs> You know, pick those numbers, you'll win the lottery. And uh, you guys are saying, okay, this is almost like a DNA from a star level, as above, so below in this sense, not a metaphysical aspect, but if you really think about it, if there's a possible way to find that quantum entanglement of this birth date equals this star chart, your DNA is like this, and then you put it together on a scientific level as well, taking it to a whole other level. But yeah, you guys definitely work well together. And yeah, let's jump to the next chart, cool. Yeah, so I guess the Panama one, because that was the one. I didn't look at this at all, so this is going to be me just rambling. So you did, right, more. Okay. Oh, yeah, I definitely did look at this chart. And can you just switch it to North Indian for one second so I can verify it? <laughs> so, okay, what's actually interesting is I've read that when you don't have any planets in the angles, that you can actually kind of be like a renunciate or someone that wants to, like, leave the active outside. Like, I'm going to try to make things happen in my life because – the angles are all about action and they're about doing things in the world. They're the natural areas that house the cardinal signs and cardinal signs are active. They want to do things in the world. They're that impulse, that start, that initiative. So like immediately when I saw this chart, I thought in some way or another, or at some point in this person's life, they're probably going to kind of want to kind of isolate or escape, whether that means they become a monk or they just like go out you know, somewhere else in the world. Um, I would have to look deeper into the chart, but that's kind of the first thing that I really noticed. Um, and then let's see what else we have going on. I can't see, or I guess, do you know what the ascendant, um, the Lagna Nakshatra, I might, I might not read it. But... Barani, it's same as yours. Okay. So we already kind of talked about that, that this person with Barani, it's all about the, um, like a struggle to go through the creative process. It's, um, it's birth only in the sense that it's related to death. And there's so much imagery with that, but I'll just leave it at that. The Mars, and I'd say this person of the house of speech, uh, family values, the house of gains, this person um, has oh. put her together. So, I was going to say, I was going to point that out. So yeah, continue. And then I'll add on to that right away. And I think that's somebody intense. It's powerful. That could even okay. be, a, maybe even a singer. I don't know. <laughs> so sometimes Mars and Jupiter together can bring a lot of money. And so there it is in the house of finances, but here's an even cooler aspect, I think, or wait, maybe not with this chart. And it's in so, Critica. Critica is all about cutting through okay. to get to the whatever. Oh, I thought I saw something with this chart, but now I'm second guessing it. Okay, never mind. Let me see what else I, if I wrote any. Ardra? Did you write that? The moon in Ardra. Okay, yeah. So Ardra Nakshatra is all about, like, it's the storm. And it's a very difficult and turbulent nakshatra. So it, it's hard for the mind to be in that particular nakshatra. But the cool thing about this, and I did write a few notes, um, is that with this particular pada, this person 
can use um, communication to transform. And so since Ardra represents a storm and storms bring electricity, this person could be so good at communicating really crazy ideas, like even crazy ideas about political candidates using um, the internet. Because so we have the storm, electricity, electricity allows us all these crazy technologies. So this person can definitely do some communicating using the internet to bring some really interesting um, information into the world. And that's why I wanted to point out again this 3 9 axis because we have Saturn again in the ninth house. And so all the things that I said about Saturn in the ninth house hold true. And just to, to kind of look at this chart in particular, so we have this mind that wants to um, transform using communication. And maybe it's because this ninth house of higher beliefs has been restricted by this Saturn, right? So this person could be maybe turned off to their you know, the religion that they grew up in or the culture that they grew up in. And so they also would be interested in doing something different with their belief. Or they could be like super dogmatic. It really depends on. This really is also a natural healer because it, Venus, Mercury, and Rahu are all in. <laughs> Look at that screen. Venus, Rahu, and Mars are all in. <laughs> Rahu and Mercury okay. are in Shadabishak. I don't know how to say it right. Sorry, Shadabishak. But it's a yep. 100 healers. So this person's all about healing and whether they're healing people on the internet, healing people in, in Mars and Critica that like surgeons and nurses come out of that too. Um, I would say Ardra's music, a lot of musicians and actually doctors. I've been noticing musicians. Oh yeah. We were talking about, yeah, we were talking about musicians. I forgot about that. Yeah. And then the fifth house of um, MAGA. So the fifth and 11th house, there's going to be maybe some struggles with kids, children, um, possibly depending you know it, it you might not you might have had kids later you might feel like if you had kids so maybe that's taking away your career feelings i would say like your career if you did you might feel like you didn't get as far because of your career but this mm -hmm. whatever you this person wants to do i mean they've got the power for sure in their chart to do it especially and if i saw they were born i don't know if they, where they live now but if they lived in panama sun in the 12th makes sense if they live in another country right foreign lands foreign um, right so this person i would say it has great gains though with that Rahu, Mercury, Venus too. Yes, I was going to say um, Rahu in the 11th is so good for money. And then the Mars and Jupiter together like that, I would think. And Rahu, that, Rahu is good, pretty good for Aquarius with it. That's all Aquarius. So that. Yep. That and there's. Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go. And, and there's a relationship between the second and the 11th house then because second Lord goes into the 11th house. So with that too, that's another great combination for. Well, depending, I have to look deeper into this, but the only thing I the, my main trigger thing would be on this is nothing is going to come easy to this person. It's going to come through hard work because the moon's in the third or emotional hard work. So the third house is courage, um, hard work, communication, but it's, it's a house of improvement. So it gets better with time. But you know, anytime you have planets, anything in the third, um, you have to work hard to nothing really, nothing it's to get what you want or how, whatever it may be, it's more hard work. Yeah. So, and yeah, who knows if this person wants to do the work because look at all the active houses are empty. So mm -hmm. it'd be interesting. I actually have friends that have this and a lot of those friends, like they really just like haven't had careers or, you know, they're, they're just chilling, you know? Oh yeah. And you know what? Interesting. The Saturn's in, uh, I got to put the nakshatras up. Okay. So I got to swap. Oh out. yeah. You can close this out. I've said all sure. that I can. I haven't, I didn't really take a long time to look at this cause we got this like, just, I got this like maybe, 20 minutes before. Uh, okay, so right. Right. Well, I appreciate you guys going through this for us. Oh, the no Saturn problem. is in. So here's, here's the thing. Saturn's in Pervashada or whatever. So that's not, that's a set that's Sagittarius. That's the 10th. Was that in the 10th or the 11th or the 9th? The 9th. Right. And sometimes that nakshatra can be just more venus -y and using creativity. So I, maybe this person is very, very creative, artistic. Um, just, I would say that that's going to be, this person needs to use their creativity, whatever it may be to fit. Cause there's a lot of like healing, same type of same niche, making change like MAGA in the fifth, you could, you could become like, it could be really powerful for fame being in the limelight. And I think you need to look at doing it in the, on the internet. So that's just my opinion. Yeah. With that third house, like I was saying to use the technology with that Ardra Nakshatra, it's so important to use, to use electricity, use the power of the storm. Yep. And it, it will get better over time. And even if it's like, like if it's something in IT or if it's your music or if it's, you know, just, it could be just, um, 
healing too. So anything like that, but pure, uh, Purva Shada is very um, Venetian and very, um, they, a lot of them can be very healthy and interested in health awareness and um, depending on which pata, which I don't, you know, very into like yoga and just eating healthy and organic foods and all of that kind of stuff. So. Oh my gosh, this looks scary. <laughs> this is, no, this is, this is, um, this is a Sagittarius um, ascendant. So somebody that can be just very, well, it's only two degrees. So we got we'd have to make sure that that time was right, but it's in the Mula. So digging to the deep root of things to help heal. I would say is the focus of Mula and just getting mm-hmm. more details and digging down to the deep roots of things. It's the root. It's um, so a lot of health, health and organic people that like um, that like organic foods uh, grow their own foods. A lot of I notice a lot of people that like dogs, any type of um, pets, dogs comes yep. out because it it's ruled by K two and so K two rules dogs. They like uh huh right. And then this person is. This is great. So K2 is in the fourth house, so it can be some turbulence in the home, home life, and, um, but it's in Revati, which is our nakshatra. So it's um, very, K2 does well in there, and he's happy in Pisces, and I know that because I had that for a while in a transit. And it's somebody that's very, um, I would say, emotion, like the happiness and the emotions and everything is... Um, and gravity. So this person could be very, very creative too. This very creative, I would say. Yeah. And um, I'll just point out something really fascinating that almost every single chart we have had, if I'm counting this correct, correctly with this um, style of chart, we have moon in the sixth house again, which we've had in almost every single chart and Saturn again in the ninth house. So I don't even have to really repeat that, but we have this moon that has dealt with so much conflict or whatever, or has its mind so set on like overcoming problems. And this is a strong moon. It's in Taurus, in Rohini Nakshatra, where it feels so comfortable. Um, The moon's favorite Nakshatra is Rohini. So it loves to spend time there. Um, So this person is going to have, well, with just looking at this one factor, that's a good factor for the health. But also moon and Rohini can like make people jealous of you because so like you might be like beautiful or have some kind of talent or whatever that um, people would be jealous of you about. So. Um, another thing, I would say this person possibly had some things with their mother because the, yep. because the moon is the least, um, so th- their mother can cause some turbulence. I would say maybe they might have some power struggles, just nothing. It might not be anything, but, or maybe this person, um, Worse well, it does, yeah, because moon does rule the eighth, so that could be worse for health because we have that eighth lord also strong. But, anyways, I'm not liking to go into a deep health yeah. thing, but yeah, the mother would definitely, any anytime moon goes into the sixth, do some deeper research because that could indicate the struggle with the mom. Rahu and K2. Rahu, Sun, Mercury, and the tenth is person in Hasta. Hasta is all about the hands healing. Um, okay. Rahu and Hasta is so this person's father possibly was really good with his hands. Possibly this person's father was in the government. Possibly this person's father <laughs> was um, like very handy. And this, yeah. person, if this person, this career, they need to work alone and they should do something that has to do with healing and um, anything with the hands. Whether they're in, I've noticed a lot of people that are in Hasta, they're really good gardeners, really good at, um, massage therapists come out of there anything and really good at contracts so like good at paperwork and very um like writing they're good at writing and painting so like writers that's why they're like good at contracts because they like can write really well Mm -hmm. like i I met with your hands i've met hosta people that are painters writers and musicians like just hands Mm -hmm. and um (laughs) just hands they're just all hands like made out of hands yeah giant hands yeah. That's a lot of hostage. Nice. It's a hamburger helper uh, guy. <laughs> yeah. With a Meineke commercial. Yeah, there's, never mind. Back on track. <laughs> <laughs> right. So but, yeah. really though, what you're saying though, this person is essentially really good with their hands. They should use their creative ideas and stuff like that, maybe with writing or other things. And healing is something that they're really good at. Or yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And start, they need to start their own business. They need to start their own business. Yeah, they're not going to work well for somebody. This person needs their space. Most people, most um, do with some conjunctions like this. Just this one's this person's going to feel like they need to retreat and go into like their own 
they're going to get more creative and more um, with K2 and I think in Revity, it's going to get more creative when they have their alone time, if they're, whether they're listening to music or they're doing some sort of meditation. And I don't mean meditating like you just don't have to meditate like this, you know, there's other, or this, you know, sometimes playing music can be meditation <clears throat> for people or playing the drums. Oh yeah, definitely. So, so any, um, any type of meditation is going to help this, this person's creativity and um, that stuff to come out and really flourish. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. you? Yeah. yeah. And just, I'm just trying to see what else is going on there, but there's just, there's a lot, but I think we, I think we dug up a lot of stuff about this person. That was just getting it on the fly, huh? Yeah. Not uh, bad. Not bad. Saturn and Venus in the ninth. They also have a Mars Jupiter conjunction too. Yeah. Their husband, I would say that this person's husband is, um, but it's in Gemini. So he's creative can be, um, or she's attracted to cre creative, um, spouses that are, cause it's in Ardra and it's in Purnavasu and just, it's, you know, that star searcher type of thing. Yeah. Who is a star, star searcher. Um, Ardra is bringing the storm. So seventh Lord is in the Mercury in the 10th. This person could work with husband. They could work together. I don't know. <laughs> just and kidding. this is rambling without. Yeah, without we're just rambling. And also with this one, there's going to always be kind of a struggle between home life and work life and trying to balance that out. Um, so they might feel like they might feel most comfortable, like being at home or being in their own space. But really this whole lifetime is about getting them out into the world, getting them to be more public. So that's something that they're going to develop. So they might have struggles with that along the way. Yeah. And this, that's, this, that's what this person needs to do. Get out in the limelight and get yeah. in. And that's and probably doesn't really, might not, it's not like, cause K2 will make you want to stay in your home where you feel isolated and you feel more comfortable. And, but sometimes you have to learn how to balance that. And with that Virgo, with Rahu and Virgo, like maybe developing some parts of your life that are more Virgo. So like managing things better, um, like taking care of the details. Whereas like Pisces is a super dreamy, like I'm just going to lay in bed all day and do nothing. This Virgo is like, no, we're going to do the work and we're going to do it like to the T perfectly. So yeah, you, you, you have a lot to develop. <laughs> that person also could be obsessed with details. Like that person yeah. could be, you know, everything has got to be details. I mean, like my neighbor has a lot of planets in Hosta and she is the most... Well, especially at this age, because this is 1977, they were born. So they definitely already have started to develop that because that's when Rahu kind of ripens. Right. You know, starting to ripen, I think. Maybe yeah. even a greenhouse or like organic food store. It's what's coming to my mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is all like, yeah, like I'm, I'm just going to say this again. Like I actually use a different um, Zodiac. So I'm just kind of like flying by the seat of my pants right here. with artistic. I think this person is very artistic. Yeah. Saturn and Venus, I've seen, art, like, and it's in um, the nakshatra that Venus is in is an artistic one, too. Curve off on yeah. That. Well, I think, I think that's really accurate. Yeah. Well, I don't know the person, but. Um, this person is actually a professor for astrophysics and talks like the gentleman on Ferris Bueller's Day Off, so. Well, that would be I'm that totally Saturn. Joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I had to throw Saturn, a curveball your way there for a second. No, you oh did a God. good, you actually did a good <laughs> job because that ninth house is like, could be somebody that works or that's um, in that higher education though. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, <laughs> it's not that crazy. Like you could have picked a word. Sagittarius is, can be very, they can be um, also, there's a lot of them that can be in that field. Professors. Of philosophy teachers, matter of fact, that is completely accurate. So Rex's intuition is too strong to make a joke. But it is good. Dang it, I tried. See what happens when yeah, I try? So Sagittarius is in So. Sorry, what? I totally interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I uh, said so that's it. So who's in, are we doing another one or are we? What do we do? I think that's pretty, that pretty much sums it up. So I definitely want to give a shout out to your YouTube channel and that's going to be channel 27. I'll leave a link specifically in the description box, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get access to the most recent updates and definitely check back because they're going to do continual updates. Um, they're, they're hopefully going to be regulars here on Lee Project. So not only can we do user charts, but also we can look at somebody that's in 
a certain industry or a certain works for a certain business or you know maybe it's a, a security officer or somebody that works for the FBI or a detective or maybe it's somebody that's an astrophysicist like I just said we're gonna do different charts with different people and then see kind of what breaks what breaks it down to make that person the way that they are so I'm really excited for that and anything else you want to share this before we close out and uh, say goodnight to the audience no it was fun that was a, that was fun Heidi what's the what's your website or are you gonna post that website we'll post it okay yeah so we can both be reached via the website or yeah there's gonna be some contact info so yeah, well, this is all new to us kind of started yeah. <laughs> when I just decided to say, oh yeah well, I'll do an interview on astrology sure why not um, I kind of put you on the spot earlier today also with yeah, that. thanks for that too that was <laughs> you like, catch like me right on the spot right <laughs> on the spot I was waiting for <laughs> You're like, I'm leaving right now. I can. I'm like, you have no choice. We have to do this right now. It's important. So I'm glad we got it out there, though. I mean, people really appreciate that, you know, especially because due to the fact that time is limited, I think that it was important for some reason. So hopefully it was just a, a bad feeling in my gut. And anyway, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, hey, let's just say this. We had really good tarot cards. And for me to pick a good tarot card is very, that's not normal because I usually, <laughs> I'm like, I'm never touching this tarot deck ever again because it's always like the, the negative ones, the reversed. So the fact that I picked a good one, in my opinion, saying something. Nicole picked a card, saying something. And you're intuitive as can be. Well, and I just looked up that card actually, and to see what the description of was it according to the the tarot deck book that it came with. And it, it's actually like a, a harmonizing card that kind of brings the yin and the yang together. So like the will of fortune, it's got the eight symbol. If you actually look at the card, it's the you know it's the symbol of infinity and. Obviously, it had the male and the feminine aspect in there in a very dark, dark, weird aspect. But anyway, so yeah, it's, it's an interesting card, and, and we'll see what happens. I'm certainly excited for the future. And also, ladies and gentlemen, check out YouTube.com slash Plandestine Time Lord if you haven't become a member already, and LeakProject.com. So thanks for everything, guys. This was awesome. Thanks for having us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us this edition of Leak Project. I'm your host, Rex Bear, and we have Heidi with us and Nicole from Channel 27. Now, the great thing about today, folks, is not only are we going to get deep into the eastern side of astrology on people's star charts, but also the western side of astrology, and we're going to do some tarot readings as well. Now, I've never owned a tarot deck until about a week ago. I told you guys my little mind trip that I had on H.R. Giger and some of the cool paintings and photos that he puts together, just really weird art. And I ended up ordering a tarot set of his of 23 cards. And I'm actually going to pull a card today as well, just in the, the light of fun, I guess. You could say, when in Rome, be a Roman. We're going to have some fun here. And you guys know my agnostic approach towards things. I, I definitely like to seek the truth, but I certainly don't know what it is. And I'm not bound to any religious preferences. So this is going to be very interesting to find out what comes from today. Now, as you guys heard earlier, Heidi and I talking about the concerns that I have with the inauguration, not only because of these mass protests that's going on, but also I want to bring to your attention, ladies and gentlemen, that the, uh, the cameras, the body cams of security and police in D.C. during the inauguration are going to be shut off. They're saying from above, the top brass are saying you're not allowed to have your cameras on. And I find that very, very odd. Now, the official story is ACLU is defending the rights of the protesters because they don't want people like cops video cameraing them while they're breaking the law doing protests because it might be used against them. So they're just looking out for the little people. But in reality, I see things a lot different, a lot more sinister. But that's a whole other podcast. We'll get into that later. It's great to have you both on the show with us here at The Leak Project. How's it going? It's going good. Yes, thanks for having us. Absolutely. Really appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited. Last time we had Heidi on the show. I mean, you blew some minds, Heidi, with the charts that you did, not only on Trump, but other people. And what I've gotten to know so far from you, Nicole, I mean, you are very astute and just the, the knowledge base that you have towards what some might consider esoteric or occult, just because it's hidden knowledge. I often consider it science that's just not as known about because you know, people have a different label on it. So this is going to be great. Looking forward to it. But let's jump into first, we've got a whole bunch of people's charts that we're going to read that have actually sent in their birth date, where they were born, the time they were born. We're going to get into that here shortly. But the first thing we're going to talk about is inauguration day into detail here. So not only what we're going to see on the eastern side with the charts, but also we're going to pull some cards and then you guys can decide what the, the symbolism is based on these tarot cards. So Let's go. Let's rock and roll. Uh, we'll start with you, Heidi. And we, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, but let's get into some more details on what you're seeing with Inauguration Day, please. Um, are we going to share screens? Yeah, and we're going to share screens right now as well. So, 
All right. So this is, um, I was just going to kind of look at Donald Trump's transits again, like I did from the, the previous video. And um, then look, this is the, the inauguration actual chart, but I did the Mir Harta. So it's called time in Vedic astrology to see like what, how it was transiting on his, on his planets. So his transits right now, I did, this is the exact day. And I, don't, I know you don't want to really get into this too much, Nicole, but he's got Rahu in the first, right? K2 mm -hmm. and seventh. And yes, I mean, Rahu and K2 in the first and seventh are dangerous in your first and seventh house anyway is a transit. So that's my main concern. But right on that day, right? His Dasha, what he's, Mars is going into right at the eighth house. What's that eighth house? Death, transformation. It's also death and rebirth. So it might not always be you know, it's change, powerful change. It can be disgrace. It can be um, all those things. Um, but Mars in his D60 chart, which is his end all tell all chart, he had um, I noticed he had something that kind of concerned me a little bit. Do you ever use this, Nicole? No, I actually haven't gotten into that screen at all. So Mars is in the 12th house. It's in Pisces. It's in Revity and or, and it's in Purva Bhattapadra. It's just, it's an overall energy of, I just personally think he's going to have hidden enemies. And I just, well, we know that he has enemies and he has hidden enemies. And I don't know what the screen's doing right now, but. Um, <laughs> it's the Hillary camp. They, they're trying to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just will say, I don't want, I mean, he's got Mars in the eighth and he's D60. Mm -hmm. And Mars is in the 12th in this. That's my concern. But I'm, I'm hoping that he's protected because he has Jupiter and he's the nakshatras that are protecting him are in good ones. So I do think it's going to hopefully be okay. But this, I mean, this is just at this time. So if you, if you want to look at the inauguration and how the year is going to be, which what I intend on doing with another, a different astrologer, bring him on. He's more into, he does a lot of politics too, did a lot of Trump um, articles and stuff we were going to do the inauguration day and kind of give an overall prediction of the, how the year was going to be. Cause it's going to be based on what time. So, you know, cause if there are riots and there are people going a little crazy, then it might change and it might um, change the way the whole chart goes of the year. So, you know, that's, I don't know what the screen is doing. But. Well, the D60 is the fastest changing most variable chart. So it's refreshing for all the incremental changes that are happening as time passes. Ah. You know what I mean? I, that's what I think it's doing at least. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> this is the chart that you'd use to see the, the differences in like twins, for instance, that are born on the same minute, but a different second. Yeah. And, and also, you can see like if you wanted to start a business or something on a day um, and you wanted to know if it was a good day, good nakshatra, then it, we would use this. So yes. but having some technical difficulties. So we might just have to can this. So really what this software is, is it's so up to date, it's constantly refreshing to keep the, the person that's actually keeping track of the software using it. Or if you're doing a reading for somebody, you can tell that person essentially what their day is going to be like based upon the, the information this is compiled. Correct. That's what I believe. Yeah, I haven't ever used this screen, but that's what I would think since the D60 does change all the time. Um, what does D60 mean exactly? So the D stands for the word divisional. So if you just take a look, like Heidi, if you could like point to one of the squares here, that represents a sign. Um, and each one of these signs can be divided. Well, each one of these signs represents an area of life. Um, and then each of these signs can be divided into smaller and smaller pieces. So let's say, for instance, we're talking about um, the ninth house, which would represent one thing it could represent is marriage. Well, if we divide that into nine sections, um, or each sign into nine sections, I mean, I'm not even describing this right, we would get the Nabamsha, which is the ninth divisional chart. So really, without going into detail and making myself sound stupid, it's just basically zooming deeper and deeper into the chart based off of a numeral numerological number that relates to a certain quality. So nine relates to marriage, for instance. So the D60 resonates with the number 60, which would resonate with um, a specific, specific things. It's actually, the D60 is typically used to show almost like the final results of all the different divisional charts. So I know I'm not describing that perfectly. So you said that's really good. And, but the, okay. the only thing is if you don't, this, that will change every thir like 30 seconds. So if you yep. know exactly what your, your time is to the seconds, then, you know, so you really can't use it. That's the point. Because who knows if the doctor, there were some comments that they posted on the YouTube 
that I did previously, like what happens if you know, you're in the ER in the do- delivery room and the doctor doesn't do your time right? So, which is completely true. I mean, it's true. Back time. And yeah. then there's a question even of if the clock is accurate, like in the 80s or the 70s, <laughs> you have a little clock moving. Right. Right. So I don't think we're going to, I think we just pull cards because we're, I don't really know what I think is going to happen. I'm just hoping and praying that everything goes smooth and safe and he is um, going to do a great job. Now, what, what are you seeing with these charts, Nicole? So I haven't spent any time looking at these charts and I just as a disclaimer, I stay out of the, I stay out of any political discussion that has to do with astrology or tarot or any of that. I will be drawing a card, but um, so I'll refrain from making any comment on that chart, but I will say if anyone wants to do a little deeper research on this chart, um, maybe Heidi and I can share what the moon's nakshatra is on that day, because oftentimes that the moon's nakshatra will show you which activities are auspicious on that day. Um, and then a person can kind of figure out, well, is inauguration going to be supported or not supported by that moon's nakshatra, which, you know, is something to take into consideration. It's in Swati. So Swati is a, it's uh, Swati is like the wind. It's fast moving. It's all over the place. Um, Heidi knows a lot about Swati nakshatra. It's a blade of grass. It's a blade of grass. It's um, the, it's a great business person. So it makes complete sense. It's uh, you know, it's a business person that has a business person mentality that fluctuates and kind of can be a great entrepreneur because and a great leader and a great mm-hmm. CEO. They have phenomenal, but they don't like really. Um, Swati doesn't really like rules well, but um, I will say because it wants to be free, but you it's changeable, yeah. Um. But for the most part, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a nice nakshatra for business, for, you know, CEOs and leaders and people that start businesses. Um, So I I personally think it's a good one. And, but I mean, I don't know if you can even use, I mean, we're just learning, we're learning. So, and we've been learning for four years and we still can't do an inauguration chart is almost just like, you know. Well, let me make an analogy with Swati that just came to mind that I think is kind of fascinating. So if you think about before a storm rolls in, right? So it gets super, so say it's just normal temperature outside, right? And then maybe if it's, it's even a little cool outside. And right before a storm, it gets extremely hot and humid. So one day it's just kind of cold. And then maybe five hours later or the next day, it gets super hot and humid. And it gets super windy. All of a sudden there's all this wind. Well, without even a meteorologist telling you what's going on, if you're familiar with how air currents work, you would know a storm is coming, right? So I always think of wind as being something that brings in change, right? Because whenever a big storm is coming or something of significance, even atmospherically, we get wind. So I think it's kind of an interesting nakshatra. Like, I think it's fascinating that that is the nakshatra of the day of inauguration because it will bring in something. And what does a storm do? It can create immense change. Like, think about what happens after a tornado, right? Right. And sometimes it's a positive change because what if the earth is like completely parched and then a storm comes and it refreshes and nourishes the earth. So we know something's coming, but without, without like me looking at this or anything. One other thing, <laughs> Swati is ruled by Rahu. <clears throat> so Rahu is pretty chaotic. Yep. So it's going to be a chaotic day in, in my opinion. It's just going to be, I just think it's going to be tough. 